Hey YouTube, um, so before I get into this video, I just wanted to warn you guys that there's a couple of technical issues that I experienced uh, in this one take wonder uh, with GM Wander 15 Will Anderson. Uh, I had a really great time, but um, I did notice a few minutes in that my computer couldn't quite handle the new feature I was using uh, for Streamlabs since that feature was very, very demanding uh, for my CPU. Um, so I ended up lowering the quality of the, the video we were reacting to. Uh, so it's a little bit blurry. And I also noticed that Will was a little bit too quiet, but I still think uh, it was a pretty enjoyable video. And I think you guys are gonna have a good time watching it. Um, so if you can tough through the, the beginning, the first like six or so minutes, um, I think you will enjoy, uh, thoroughly enjoy the rest of, of this collaboration. So that's that. Enjoy the video. See you guys soon. Okay. I hope this works. Welcome everybody to round 20 of the 2022 Scrabble Players Championship. I have the honor of joining Mr. GM Wander15 Will Anderson uh, to do some dual commentary over the game that we played in Baltimore this summer, and that game was, of course, live streamed. Who would miss a streamer battle? So welcome, Will. Thank you. Yeah, typically, I feel like normally when you get to be on board one, it's because you deserve it due to your play at the event. But maybe, maybe we deserved it due to our efforts of content creation because certainly mainly <laughs> certainly not uh, a, a matchup between the the top performing players the, the two of us but um but it was a lot of fun of course um to to be on the stream this late and uh i guess uh, i guess we were told that people were sort of asking for it as a matchup which uh that feels nice to know people wanted to watch us play yeah, it does. It really does. Um, so basically, Will was ten and nine here. I was eleven and eight. Will, you just lost like a bunch of games. You were telling me. Yeah. So not not just three games in a row, but three particularly brutal games. So I lost the first of the three to one of the two finalists, Ori Swift in a game that I played mostly well, but at the key juncture of the game, I made one little tactical mistake that I sorely regretted, and it just completely unraveled in really disturbing fashion, and I carried those bad vibes with me into my next round with the eventual champion, Michael Fagan. So I played two, both finalists and had really bad losses. Um, and then the third game after that, I think was probably the first game of the afternoon, or the th I was trying to shake it off, and it was another brutal loss to Kevin Fraley. So three rough losses in a row, at which point it was actually kind of a relief to see that I was on the stream playing you, just because it gave me a reason to sort of shake it off, not worry too much. Um, about those three losses and just try to have some fun with uh, a pretty unique opportunity to get to play a streaming game, not because I was earning it in the standings, like I said, but because it was something that people wanted to see. So I tried to forget about those three losses and go into this game ready to play well and, and have fun against, you know, one of my fam favorite opponents in, in you who will take any opportunity to, to challenge me to think differently or do something creative. And obviously in this spot, I was on guard for content plays from you. <laughs> so yeah, so that was kind of my mindset here. Coming into the game. Yeah, uh, as you see, you went for the handshake, I went for the bump and you you <laughs> you happily changed to the bump to the more COVID friendly. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Scrabble handshakes like the chess handshakes videos. Hopefully we can get hopefully we can get some some of those at some point. Super cuts. Yeah. I yeah, feel like I am going first, I guess. I'm yeah, so you were first. I I just wanted to add, I, I also felt this way. Like I just suffered two pretty brutal losses that were pretty much putting me out of contention. 
Uh, but I was so happy to just like get the opportunity to be streamed. That was like my goal, my main goal for, yeah. um, for the for the stream or for the tournament was to be live streamed add, against you. I should add that's true. You had expressed that exact goal, but I should add that I had already been streamed three times as the top seed. As I'm playing Zoris here, it seems fine. I thought afterwards maybe I should play Zip. Instead, because keeping the S is so strong on that board, I also have an A to underlap the Z, but I think I think Zori's is okay. Um, your rack is horrible. Yeah, I mean, surprisingly, I would think Zori's is by far best. It's 20 more points, but the defense that, like, Zip provides and yeah, the... Yeah, not putting the S right out there on the triple lane where any bingo that you have there is going to really get pumped up in value. There's definitely merit to playing shorter yeah and also the i guess the double letter score um it's being open we're, we're yeah. actually yeah allowing me to uh potentially make some some overlaps but here yeah my rack was hilariously bad here but it was funny enough that i was able to play comic out of it yeah. um so provide myself with some comic relief <laughs> But I think this was the the best play, and yeah, nothing really else to think about here. Yeah, I agree. Um, so yeah, just to, to finish my previous point, I know I, I'm recalling that I'm gonna think for a while about this because I really want to play the Collins word Capuera off mm -hmm. of the sea, um, which would be just what I need here. And eventually, I decide that I can't play that because it's Collins, and you're never gonna go for that by the way your rack is also a columns word wigs with the a's um but the um the the three games that i had had on stream i also really hadn't earned at this tournament in a similar fashion i only got to be streamed in rounds one two and three because i was the top seed and that's the custom is that going into the Nationals, the top seeded player starts out on the top board and gets to be live streamed. And in each of those three games, I also lost. <laughs> and two, and actually pretty much all three of them in crushing fashion as well. So it was like, <laughs> um, you know, the stream games weren't going that well. My games prior to this game weren't going that well. But I was in pretty good spirits somehow, um, regardless um, I, I definitely have had other nationals where I got much more down on myself for bad results than this one. So mm -hmm. silver lining, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, you were like in incredibly good spirits as the person that was probably favored to win the whole thing doing like going 10 and nine. Um, for me, I had really high hopes um, I didn't want to like get my hopes up for the nationals, but I was hoping at least to like place in in the top ten as you play the best play of Powa. Um, but yeah, it was I was I was like terribly down on myself in in this event. Um, luckily, you didn't give me a spot for wigged because I think I would have played it. Yeah, I, I would challenge it. That's one of my words that I know. Like, I have it on a special list of words that I could easily get confused from the two lexicons that I sort of generated over time going through the Collins words. So that I am pretty confident I would have challenged Wigged with the H. But yeah, Pawa, like, it actually took me a while to see Pawa, frankly. Okay. I don't know why, but obviously conflicted about playing it due to the big spot and you, you make your best play of Wigged for sure. Yeah. And of course, I'm hoping for a D here so I can play Dreamier. Which, of Oops. course. Oop. Sorry, I'm just uh, changing the quality here just to see if it it helps. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I gave you the D for Dreamier, which is a really nice score for you. Um, I thought I was like, I was super happy you gave me a spot for Wigged. And then, yeah, just like this is like giving each other spots for our words kind of like a few turns in a row. But luckily with my draw, I was able to bounce back pretty significantly after Dreamier. Yeah, that J hitting on top of the... Uh, so like oftentimes, 
oftentimes I feel like we see the play that we make a lot quicker than we actually play it. So like in this position, I was, I had already seen JEUX and JEHU um, on top of AW. And it was just a matter of me making sure that I was pretty much like 100% ready to just play JEUX. And after a little bit of kibitzing, I think we were, we were talking about something. I, I yeah. think I said something about you being dreamy. Is that right? Yes, we were making a dreamy joke, which I was going to say when I played it that I don't I don't know whether, you know, th this video is going to live on your channel. So we should say that, you know, dreamy are describing actor typo as opposed to myself. Two dreamy guys that we are, of course. Um, yeah, I guess yeah, it's a great point, though, with the, you know, the instinct leading you to see that play and, su you know, suspect that it's likely to be good. But. You know, in a blitz game, you're going to play that nearly instantaneously. But in a slow-paced, you know, serious tournament game like a Nationals game, you got to do your extra scanning the board. Do I have better opportunities for the X where if I keep it, it's going to make more sense over a two-turn span, right? Like, there are certain boards where the X is going to be super powerful and saving it might actually be better. And you have to sort of evaluate, is this one of these boards... I don't I don't think it was. I think you made the right call, but it's definitely always worth slowing down when you have the time to spend to to make sure of it. Yeah, with the X especially, there are lots of like hidden or just like easy spots to to use it. Uh so for example, the PI in the middle of the board, like if that R of Zoris was another consonant, uh potentially keeping the X would become a lot better so that I could play something like Mix or Max from the M next turn had I drawn an A or an I. Uh, so that sort of thing is something just to check before before just dumping your X because the X can be extremely valuable um, if there are multiple, especially if there are multiple like X-bomb spots on the board. And look at your rack. Oh my God. Yeah, I remember being confused here. I certainly... Would have wished for a better, <laughs> and I see you arranging your rack. <laughs> I don't know what I was imagining the blank as. Maybe a B. Oh, not you're not imagining. The oh, way. W. You get to play. Get to play. Oh, really? Okay. I thought you were setting it up that way and wishing. Oh, shithead. To play, yeah. To play shithead. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I remember now. <laughs> which I, which I, pronounce. I pronounce shithead ironically. To rhyme with uh, Sinead O'Connor, I like I pronounce it Shithade. <laughs> it's not offensive to anybody. So yeah, here I'm just like, yeah, you know, can I play Quag through the UG of Wigs, leaving a million E's and an L? No, I don't think so. Can I play something leaving the Q? I could play Lame under the M, scoring decently, and it leaves E E E Q, which is just so so poor so ultimately i decided to exchange and i kept a e l it's a little counterintuitive but i did think that those are three good bingo tiles of course mm -hmm. and um i do have the spot under the z to dump some vowels if need be so it seems reasonable to keep a vowel heavy leave yeah for those reasons especially but... with with an l the l is very good at eating vowels yeah. um so have, had you drawn a few more vowels, the L could still be useful in, in dumping said vowels. You're keeping L-A-M-E as well underneath stories, which is not a great play, but it's it's something. It's something. And I think the nice thing about it is that it can become something, you know, better, certainly. There's, you know, that's just keeping A, A E in general to play something underneath, you know, through the M and maybe better, depending on what I draw. It's, it's, I mean, these are very minor, minor details, not, you know, I could easily see just keeping EL being correct or close to correct as well. So yeah. It's, uh, it's pretty close. And this was a, this is a nice job by you here because you have a blank. There's definitely a lot of tiles, you know, to think about playing through and you actually, I'm pretty sure made the either the best scoring play 
second in a best. Tricky, a tricky spot here. So, right? or, oh, second best. Okay. So yeah. So as you can see, I started the I started this turn with like twenty two minutes on my clock. Will was down to eighteen thirty three. Neither of us are in time trouble, but I had a a pretty significant time advantage. Um, as Will took some time to debate what to do on his previous rack and on the power rack. Um, whereas my plays were pretty pretty easy. Um, once I spot them, they're pretty much the right thing to do. Um, and yeah, then I drew into this rack where I was like, oh my god, I wish I could switch places with Will and like find my bingos 20 times faster. Um, and I knew that I was going to have to spend a really long time. But again, I did spot the play I ended up making very quickly. And not very quickly, very quickly for me, I guess. I think I had spotted it already at this point in the turn, but I just kept on looking for a better play because, like, like you said, there's so many letters to play through. I can end in an E, an R, an M. I could start with a C or have a C in second position and score better than the play I ended up making. And even more interestingly, I could play a nine-letter word potentially uh, through either the PI, the AS, the EI or the UG um, on the board vertically. And so I spent a decent amount of time looking for those uh, plays as well. And I think I took another at least like three minutes here to, to figure all this out. And I unfortunately missed the best bingo, which is an incredibly difficult spot. And I'm kind of upset because I didn't know the word, uh, but it would have been so cool to have found what was it again? This word through the EI, diathesis. Diathesis, that's right, diathesis. Oh my God. So diathesis would put the D uh, between the two triple word scores on the top right of the board. Uh, and pluralized powers, right? pluralized powers and score um, like 80 points, I think. Um, I never, I don't know that word. I don't know nines 81. very well. No chance I ever see or think of that in this situation so um, yeah there are a handful of players that would potentially or definitely find this word nigel would definitely for, for example find this word um and potentially a handful of other players that would see it uh, yeah i would and give dave weekend a chance at it give mac meller a chance at mm -hmm. it um noah so, walton i would say yeah. as well mm -hmm. and i just I wish I was one of those players because it was a word that I knew. I just was not able to spot it. Um, and yeah, I ended up, I ended up playing what I saw, but yeah, you are sitting here. You're now like, I don't know. You now have a time advantage and you're I'm yawning. Pretty, I'm pretty you, confident. You just like you have a point yeah. here just because this is, you know, I don't think it's a secret that I think, you are a very good play picker, one of the best that I'm familiar with, and that you know when you when things devolve into word finding, that's when you're going to take extra time and think a little bit harder. I don't think of you as and and then again once again the horseshoe theory is as a, a really good play picker, then in the pre end game when things get really complicated, some people might autopilot those decisions but then again is a situation where i would imagine you using more time so because this game is still kind of early to think of you using this much time easiest explanation is you have a blank another possibility is you just happen to have been faced with a really tricky or complicated decision that you know will be fun for you to discuss afterwards but certainly much likelier that you're you're struggling with bingo tiles probably a blank and something's coming down so i wasn't surprised at all to to see this come down and yeah i mean diathesis sure i i definitely you know from your from your shoes i would be spending probably the most time looking for something pluralizing comics right like that feels like the most logical maybe something ending in the r of dreamier but that doesn't feel quite right just because the odds of a bingo like that happening without an e on your rack aren't very good right but i i would be thinking you know in your shoes i'm i'm wanting to pluralize 
comics here, but it's just not possible to do that. Yeah, that too. I, I failed to mention that I could just have a seven letter word. So there's just so many things that I knew that I could be missing here. And the last thing that I do is I will just like, I'll just mix my tiles just to see if there's something that I can find doing that after, after writing down a bunch of stuff on my score sheet to see if I can find the bingo. But yeah, I eventually just went with Jihadis. With a blank um, J. Yeah, which is, I guess people were impressed by this. I was not impressed at all. I was sure that I had missed something a lot simpler than diathesis, mind you. But like, yeah, I I was shaking my head at the end of all this and just like, why, like, why can't I find something better? This looks like there has to be something better. And indeed there was, but it wasn't what I was expecting. <laughs> Yeah, and making the blank a J in and of itself is, you know, not a lot of people have that on their proverbial bingo card as, you know, that's that's not that easy to think of those power tile letters as the blank. So I think that's probably why people said, hey, nice job. This is a nice find. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, and... you a solid lead here. Yeah. Um, I was happy with the position that this led to. I just wished that, like, I knew that I had found um, the best, like, human, human bingo. <laughs> but um, you did, yeah. This is this is funny to to make that chess-like distinction between quote unquote a human move and an engine move, right? Like, this is as close as we have to that. Yeah, jihadist is is a is a great play, but is a human move as opposed to diathesis is an engine move. Yeah, and again, like there are humans that can find engine moves, um, some yeah. pretty pretty uh, often, but um, yeah, it's just uh, it's it's important to like not like hit myself too hard for yes. for missing diathesis. I just wish I had seen it; it would have been so good for content as you find your best play of ketone. The other thing I wanted to mention is that um, when I have when I have a blank like that, and I know that I'm taking time and I know that I'm giving off like tells that might uh, that might make it seem like I have the blank or I have bingo tiles, it's way more important for me to know that I have a bingo. Yeah. So I that I'd seen jihadist. I was happy enough to spend time because I'm not giving off a tell. I mean, you just have to wait and see what I do. Yes, you can spend as much time as you want once you know for sure you have a bingo available, right? Yeah. Like, I guess maybe the exception to that is when you are debating whether or not you want to, to play a bingo. Mm -hmm. Pass up a bingo for something that scores, you know, 40 ish points and leaves a blank or something like that. Then maybe you want to make that choice as fast as you can so your opponent can't read the length of your choice as a sign that you were picking between that play and something better, like a bingo or better, quote unquote, higher scoring is what I mean. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, play yeah, Watts here. so Watts, people wondered if I should play Wants instead, and after drawing two extra ends, people were probably more, people yeah. in the chat were probably more uh, partial to, to Wants, but I think <clears throat> I'm okay with the play of Watts despite what happened. I think that the DN leave is just better um, than the Great. DT leave, and it's not good to be results-oriented, but... Um, Interestingly, before the um, dictionary update that removed slurs, there was a better play than, than wants or wants of just twat underneath ketone. But quickly, I like I I realized that that wasn't going to fly, and that I just needed to to take the points. Um, and this is a handful of points, thirty six points for for the play of Watts. I would have preferred to take out the triple. Um, but luckily for me, you're stuck with another pretty brutal rack here. The, uh, yeah, the triple on the lower middle part of the board, whatever that is, column H, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it looks like a perfectly good play. If, if I made a mistake this game, it's probably on this turn. I would think there were actually a number of reasonable choices here. I don't, I just can't remember if I saw no toll on top of ketone making all these overlaps of okay t e a t and l o low um that looks decent 
just because it scores quite well and I'm trailing by a little bit. I don't want to close off too much space. And the nice thing about Notal is that it preserves hooks of OK, such as Oak with an E, Oka with an, with an A. That being said, I'm not about to consider this a huge error. Um, yeah, I don't consider this an error at all. I think getting rid of the U, even though I, you yeah, could draw I, the Q, I, is just really good. And you're scoring 26 no matter what. Um, and you're creating you're creating some play on the 14 row, which may or may not be good. Like, the likelihood of me using the W to block the 14 row and the W is pretty high. That's what was, that was my concern after now, Noel, is that you can really hoover up a lot of space with a simple play there. Yeah, uh, but the thing is, I think there was somebody in the chat that said something, I think it was even Marlon, said something about how this is totally fine, you don't need to worry here. Like, you're only down 14 points. There's still a lot of play left. You can play to the X. There are some, some scoring plays that are still remaining on this board. And it's not you don't need to worry too much about leaving things open for yourself at this juncture in the game, I think. Yeah, I was kind of cognizant of that same, like, let's just be patient. Don't panic. You're not down a ton after your play. You're only going to be down a little. So I, and then I was happy to see that play by you, which looks mm -hmm. like a perfectly solid play, but it doesn't score super much. And I am about to get a pretty good score yeah. um, on top of ketone here. So, you know, all of a sudden I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. And to your, I, I see to your R, S, and N, now the Q comes. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if I gave up any tells when I drew the Q, like by moving my hand this. slightly. I, I mean, I'm thing. I'm shaking. I'm like, I don't know. Look at this. Looks like it's a tell. I'm moving my fingers. People, please don't, please don't like psychoanalyze me. I, I'm <laughs> yeah. never gonna be able to like. I have so many tells, and if you analyze them, I might be in trouble. Even if like, even if you're not super good at Scrabble, you could probably beat me. Just by seeing my tells. Just by analyzing that, yeah. I'm the same. I had another game earlier in the tournament where uh, my opponent said something like they were sort of reading my demeanor. Ooh. Um, so, I don't know. I, I guess we all need to, to think about that, even though I don't really do a ton of that. No, you're you're really straight, I'd say, I'd say in terms of like... Your demeanor, you're pretty calm and collected most of the time. I um, appreciate that. I think, yeah. I think if people want to analyze someone, first of all, they should analyze the player that's not as good, me, and the player that gives off way more tells. So whoever's looking at Will's games, you're fine. Like, you'll, you'll be okay. So here, it seems pretty... Uh, bad for me actually um i'm still only down four points you just scored a bunch of points for obey but i do have a pretty cute little spot to drop my cue and i have some some small chance of my rack improving a decent amount uh next turn and to my i mean to my shock pretty much the letter i drew was the letter i was like envisioning drawing with this rack. I was yeah. looking at what I could potentially draw out of the bag in terms of bingos, which doesn't look very possible on this board. But then as I turned over the tile, I was like, oh my God, I have achieved immortality. Mm -hmm. You <laughs> and, ascended to a new plane. Yeah. Clairvoyance and perception. And um, although it seems likely, I mean, as you quickly play Lyrex, yeah. it seemed likely that the the most likely play you would make would be through the A and Watts to score some points. Yeah. Um, I was worried that you would block my bingo. But and even if you block it, I have the same word to the AS in the middle of the board for like a really nice score. Yes. So I felt super good here to just drop Nirvana's down and take a really nice lead. Yeah, for Lurex, I don't know, it felt pretty forced. It also, the nice thing about Lurex is that I'm kind of sneakily drawing into bingos that end in A-T-E through that A that you just played in. Okay. Leaving L-E-T. Like, I, I definitely 
am not drawing dead to draw bingos after Lurex, in addition to all the nice letters that I've just put out in space, the L right. R. So um yeah. I felt like Lurex had to be fine. I, I don't I don't know. I don't really imagine there was too much else. And now <laughs> the U yeah, and now look, but the U is also really nice in Lurex to just like prevent overlaps. It's very hard to overlap a U, so yeah, definitely the correct play. You played it quickly, and look at what is aligned on my rack. Yeah, when I drew right. these seven letters, I was like, oh my god. Okay, now it's really likely that Will is going to play somewhere on the board uh, elsewhere Nirvana, than... Nirvana and Overholy back-to-back. -back. Yeah. I mean, were you... just... what were you doing prior to this game? <laughs> the tile guys. <laughs> Signed some sort of deal here. Smiling on you this way. But I was thinking, even if Will does block this insane eight-letter word that I drew out of the bag, I'm going to get a triple to play with, and I am feeling really good here. Yeah, it's true. Um, and, you know, for, as, as you say, it's I guess it's possible that I'll block off that L and block over Holy, but it's certainly not. You have to know that it's not going to be my preference to play up there i'm gonna want to cover the triple yeah nirvana's here so the odds are if i have any play there i'm quite likely to do it and then you get your bingo and are unless i have something absolutely huge on this turn or next turn yeah. you're gonna be in really really good shape yeah and it's worth mentioning that you're down 60 points here but by scoring over 30 um by scoring over 30 points it just takes another scoring play on, on your end that you are indeed threatening, potentially through the L, to come back into the game. So it's not like you want to leave as much open as right. possible. And, and this I'm was just like, like... The second blank's lurking, right? The other blank's out still. So if you just don't have a play quite that huge, I can draw the second blank. And after <laughs> delayed, I'm making... It's just like, so I have, sick. I have, a, I have a lane... Right, like a sevens lane hooking A N and T I, that's a pretty good spot to potentially play something. Not great, yeah. but good. Yeah, and it's impossible to block both at the same time just because of the yeah. board geometry, but oh were you not expecting that? And that yeah, was just point, completely sick. So at this point I know I've lost my fourth straight game, almost certainly. I see that I have the blank and I have goofily, which is gonna be good. But again, you're up by at whatever when the score updates it's going to be like 86 points you're up by over 100 yeah. and in this situation i know there's pretty much no way i can do something creative that gives me a chance to win so even though goofily is never winning the game for me it's probably worth me just playing it and getting to the end of the game just because even if i don't bingo here and try to go gun for something big like You're what? Up by enough that pretty much any reasonable scoring play by yeah. you is going to outrun me anyway. So I might yeah, literally, the only way for you to win here is to like set up a triple triple somehow, but you can't do that. The V just like yeah, the V in that spot makes it really it's it's, it's not impossible. impossible. It's impossible, and yeah, you quickly determine that yeah, goofily is the best you've got, and. Yeah, this game became quite the banger in the last few moves. Yeah, we're um, slapping bingos down. Um, and yeah, everybody players. saw, and super lucky for me, everybody saw Fooling, by the way, and Will saw Goofily before everyone, of course. But, um, like, funnily enough, like, the Overholy, I checked the bag before you made the play of Delete, so I knew that there were... Uh, 15 tiles unseen mm. and uh, 16 actually is it I think maybe 16 um, in the bag and you played delete maybe it's 14 you played delete keeping 8 in the bag and I was just like okay like overholy wins 100% of the time if this play of overholy emptied the bag the play of goofily would have won the game for you mm. so it was really important to i mean i would play over holy no matter what but just the fact that it had to win like 100 percent of the time because there was still a tile left in the bag after you would bingo was was extremely key here so just ex like incredible luck and i felt really bad 
because I thought, first of all, that I had not played optimally, that Jihadist had to have been a mistake, and that you were doing worse than me is just a complete and utter, like... It doesn't make any sense. In this game or in the tournament at large? In, in, the, in the tournament and in the game. It's just one of those things, right? Like, Scrabble isn't like chess. You can be you could be the top seed and have events like this. And I absolutely did not play perfectly and should have won more games than I did. But I don't, I don't think this, at the same time, I don't think this is my year. Um, even if I had been absolutely <laughs> on my game as you are about to. That would win. Enjoy my content play here, Goof yeah. Goofy Lie and EV, which is a very high EV play if it stays on the board. Pretty yeah. Expected value. So as you can see, like this is probably the most serious tournament of uh, of the year in North America. But of course, your streamers were having a good time despite yeah. despite all that. Probably aided by the fact that neither of us was really in contention to win. <laughs> I would I would I would enjoy under almost any circumstances. I feel like I would enjoy playing you on stream, and I would feel lighthearted enough to joke around with you. And I do feel like there is. I feel like we need. I don't know. We don't have to become like poker, where there's table talk after every hand sometimes, or any <laughs> of that. But I feel like we could stand to loosen up a little and enjoy ourselves a bit more, no matter what. And I get that, like it's frustrating to lose a game, but hopefully, we can, we can enjoy as you. Oh, nice, nice spot for your AP there. Yeah, Wiggles would have suggested that play. <laughs> True. <laughs> yes, um, as the post game outplay. Um, yeah, post game so, yeah. outplay. But yeah, that was the I game. Loss here. Yeah, you won. Uh... You won some games after this as we... Oh, we do the handshake now. Okay, so we make up nice. for the fist bump in the beginning. But yeah, so this I, was, I, I this was crazy. I do games eventually, but yeah. I actually lost two more games before I got out of my funk. Oh here. my but god. I had, I had a six-game <laughs> six losing streak in the middle of the event. So it was, uh, it was pretty rough. I felt like I was I had a I had an 0 and 3 start like I said earlier in the video on um, all three games were kind of rough they were all on stream and then I fought my way back to be 10 and 6 and then lost 6 games in a row so scrabble scrabble is just brutal. can be brutal sometimes but hey sometimes and I'm forcing you to close. relive it Oh, it's not. Of course, it's no problem. I, I this was a fun game. I always enjoy, you know, squaring off against you and on the stream in particular. This is this is probably the least traumatic of the six losses that I had because it was kind of a lot of my moves seemed relatively clear. I felt like I didn't make any major missteps. There were other games where I couldn't say that. So. Yeah. No, I think I don't see any mistake for you. Honestly, like I, I looked over this game and I feel like the only mistake was jihadist. Um, so, yeah, and that, again, that's like, can you really call? I mean, there is the, a theoretical mistake the same way that, you know, we want to, you know, play play like the equivalent of stockfish. But if you don't really know that word super solidly, it's hard to it's hard to consider it a practical mistake, right? Like, there are mistakes of words that you absolutely know and should find, and then there are mistakes of words that are theoretically better, but can, as you were saying yourself, can you really get on yourself for, for missing that? Not really. So, by that metric, really clean game. Yeah, and I think, I think the most important thing about, um, about this game is that people were able to see um to see us in action and to see a really really clean game i think that's the most important thing that the audience gets to see like as good scrabble as money can buy or as just following a twitch channel can buy um and really that's that's i think we share the goal of just wanting to bring that joy of the game and just the high octane strategic um stuff that comes with it that people might not know about um so i was really happy to have had the opportunity to to play you um on stream despite yeah the tournament not going our way 
uh, and it was yeah, yeah it was it was it was fun best. it was fun it was it was a good game won't be the last i'm sure i'm sure there will be more titanic streamer battles in our future which i will be very excited for hopefully they continue to hopefully we continue to, to do <laughs> to do the stream justice and and play at that level hopefully. right yeah fingers crossed <clears throat> yeah I fingers crossed yeah 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 we might we might become washed up like the more the more we stream right that's that's the fear <laughs> but yeah that was uh so that was that was our game that was round 20 of the scrabble players championship um this past summer in baltimore um and yeah it was uh it was a great it was a great time despite despite the the playing not going our way but um always yeah it, yeah. Feels, it feels much more like uh obviously it's a competition we all want to win it feels equally if not more so like a, a convention and like an annual get together of all my you know our scrabble tribe um so really a special experience every year it's very difficult for the scrabble at nationals to become so bad that you stop having a good time not impossible <laughs> not impossible yeah and there are moments too of course where yeah. you just you just yeah you just don't want to talk to anybody but yes. for the most part yeah for the most part it's a fantastic time so uh, with that i will leave the link to this video and all of the other videos probably the entire playlist of uh the 2022 scrabble players championship in the description i'll leave will's credentials as well of course uh, if you're not following will on twitch or subscribe to him on youtube um gotta i don't that. yeah i gotta keep my content flowing but thank you i have i have some in in the pipeline so yeah i can't wait um i just i'm one of the first people to jump on on the will bandwagon and i've been telling him to get back into the content creation um, because it's just a pleasure. It's just a pleasure, man. And thanks for coming on. It was, uh, it was really fun. And hopefully this video was watchable. And there's actually live commentary um, that we muted uh, just so as not to interrupt uh, what was going on. So I think you should actually rewatch this and listen to the potentially more entertaining commentary <laughs> of people that were hired for the job. <laughs> Yeah, I know the commentary was really good um, over the course of the event, so definitely another good way to watch. Um, but yeah, I mean, right back at you, Josh. I'm I'm loving loving the steady flow of great content you're putting out. Hopefully, everybody else is too. Thanks, man. All right, so see everybody uh, on our next adventure. I think this is the last video that I'm going to post of this summer's tournament, so. Can't wait to show you what's next and see you soon.